Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. It is February the 22nd and we're continuing our readings in Exodus and chapter, chapter 14. Now in chapter 14 we have the sad story told of the rebellion of the children of Israel in the wilderness when they turned against the Lord and the Lord was unable to take them into the land. The Lord refused to allow them to go back to go into the land. The entrance into the land needed faith and obedience and therefore the Lord would only be leading them to destruction. The Lord had to wait for all the people who rebelled to die and for a whole new generation to be born and to grow up to be fit to be led into the land. The children of Israel were deeply distressed and they wept all night and they complained at the leadership of Moses and Aaron and they insulted them by asking why they had been brought into the wilderness to die and they even suggested returning to Egypt which was impossible and unthinkable they even suggested that Joshua might be their captain to lead them back little did they realize that 40 years later Joshua would lead Israel into the land Joshua told the people clearly that they must not rebel against the Lord. The children of Israel considered murdering Moses and Joshua. The Lord appeared to Moses promising that he would destroy the nation and raise up a nation from the sons of Moses. However, Moses refused the idea and pleaded for the deliverance of Israel. Moses reminds the Lord of his character saying, the Lord is long suffering and of great mercy forgiving iniquity and transgression and by no means clearing the guilty visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation pardon i beseech thee the iniquity of this people according unto the greatness of thy mercy and as thou hast forgiven this people from egypt even until now the Lord spared the people and the 40 years of wandering began they had 40 years because for 40 days they were in the land the spies were in the land and so the Lord gave them a year for every day in which they gave a, f a bad report an evil report of the land I sometimes think that men and women have moments in which they come to decisions that last for a long time. The children of Israel had tempted the Lord ten times, and yet he still forgave them for Moses' sake. Now they tempted the Lord at the Red Sea. They tempted the Lord at Mara. They tempted the Lord in the wilderness of sin. They tempted the Lord with the manna twice. They tempted the Lord at Rephidim, at Horeb, at Tabara, at Kib Kibroth, and at Kadesh Barnea. It's interesting that in Matthew's Gospel, the Lord um, describes the um, rebellion of Israel, and the the Gospel of Matthew is set out in exactly the same way um, as the ten rebellions, except for one, which is in the wrong order. But we won't go over that. Caleb is declared as a faithful man. He but he followed the Lord fully. The Lord explained to the people that only Joshua and Caleb would enter the land. The children of Israel wandered for 40 years. One year for every day they rebelled against the Lord. In the next few verses, the Lord outlines the importance of the offerings made to the Lord. One day the children of Israel found a man gathering sticks on the Sabbath day and they brought him to Moses. They arrested him and then they asked the Lord what to do and the Lord said he was to be executed. The people stoned him outside the camp and the fear of breaking the Sabbath came upon the whole people. Next the Lord describes the importance of every man having a border of blue upon his garments. It was a constant reminder of the commandments of the Lord which the children of Israel were bound to keep. When we get to the New Testament, we find the same people, the children of Israel, considering committing the same rebellion 
all over again. So in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 it says, um, verse 1, In the past God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways, but in these last days he has spoken unto us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the universe. And in chapter 2 it says, We must pay most careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away. For since the message spoken by angels was binding, and every violation and disobedience received its just punishment, then how shall we escape if we ignore so great salvation? This salvation which was first announced by the Lord was confirmed to us by those who heard him. God also testified to it by signs and wonders and various miracles and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. Let's go to chapter 3 verse 1. So therefore, holy brothers and sisters, you share in the heavenly calling, fix your thoughts on Jesus, who we acknowledge as our apostle and high priest. He was faithful to the one who appointed him, just as Moses was faithful in all God's house. Jesus was found worthy of greater honour than Moses, just as him that um, builds the house is greater than than the what than the house itself for every house is built by someone but god is the builder of everything moses was faithful as a servant in all god's house bearing witness to what would be spoken by god in the future but christ was faithful as a son over the house and we are his house if indeed we hold firmly to our confidence and the hope and the hope in which we glory as the holy spirit says Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as, as you did in the rebellion during the time of testing in the wilderness, when our ancestors tested and tried me, though for forty years they saw what I did. That is why I was angry with that generation. I said, their hearts are always going astray, and they have not known my ways. So I declare my an oath in my anger they shall never enter my rest see to it brothers and sisters that none of you has a sinful unbelieving heart that turns away from the living god but encourage one another as long it is called as long as it is called today so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness we have come to share in christ if indeed we hold our original conviction firmly to the very end as has been said today if you will hear his voice do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion who were who were they who heard and rebelled were they not all that moses led out of egypt and with whom was he angry for 40 years was it not those who sinned whose bodies perished in the wilderness to whom god did and did swear that they would never enter his rest if not to those who disobeyed so we see that they were not able to enter because of their unbelief wow so what we've got then is this fascinating passage and um, let's go back and just highlight a couple of points <coughs> um okay so all the congregation lifted up their voice and uh, they cried and the people wept that night and all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron and the whole congregation said unto them would God that we had died in the land of Egypt that's a shocking thing to say um, M Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the congregation of the children of Israel and Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jehunan which were of them that searched the land rent their clothes wow and the Lord said unto Moses in verse 11 how long will this people provoke me how long will it be ere they believe me for all the signs which I have showed I will smite them with pestilence um, and disinherit them and will make of thee a great nation mightier 
than they. And Moses said to the Lord, then the Egyptians will hear of it, and so on. And he says, you cannot do this, Lord. You just cannot do this. He describes in verse 18. Now in verse 18, I have my past word for today. And this is what he says. He says, you cannot do this because the Lord is long suffering of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. Pardon, I beseech thee, in the iniquity of this people, according unto the greatness of thy mercy, as thou hast forgiven this people from Egypt, even until now. That was an amazing intercession by Moses for the people. And the Lord said, I have pardoned according to thy word. As truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord, because all these men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have tempted me now these ten times, have not hearkened to my voice. Right. Surely they will not see the land which I spoke unto their fathers. Now that's quite an incredible thing. So the Lord brought them out of Egypt, but because of their unbelief, they were unable to enter the land. <clears throat> Take a look at verse 35. I, the Lord, have said, I will surely do this, all this evil. Sorry. I will surely do it unto all this evil congregation that have gathered together against me. In the wilderness they shall be consumed, and there they shall die. And uh, that's quite an amazing thing. And the, the children of Israel repented and they said, well, we changed our mind. We want to go into the promised land. And Moses said, go not up. The Lord is not among you. You will that you be not smitten before the enemies. However, they presumed to go up unto a hilltop. Nevertheless, the ark of the covenant of the Lord and Moses departed not out of the camp and the Amalekites came down and the Canaanites which dwell in that hill and smote them and discomforted them even unto Hormah. So the children of Israel they had discovered that they were not with the Lord. Now there's another interesting passage in verse 27 and onward and this has really changed and coloured my thinking about how the Lord deals with the children of Israel. Let's, let's read it together. He says, and if any soul th sin through ignorance, then he shall bring a she-goat of the first year for a sin offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for the soul that sinneth ignorantly, when he sinneth by ignorance before the Lord, to make an atonement for him, and it shall be forgiven him. You shall have one law for him that sinneth through ignorance, and both for them that are born amongst the children of Israel, and for the stranger that sojourneth among you. But, that's verse 30, but the soul that doeth ought presumptuously, whether he be born in the land or the stranger, the same reproacheth the Lord, and that soul shall be cut off from among the people, because he hath despised the word of the Lord, and hath broken his commandment, that soul shall be utterly cut off, his iniquity shall be upon him. So there we are. The atonement that the Lord provided for Israel was for sin that was committed in ignorance. But sin that was willful and presumptuous, there was no atonement for sin like that. And so people that sinned presumptuously, they were dealt with severely. They were stoned and they were cut off from the people. It says, his iniquity shall be upon him. So that tells us a lot, doesn't it? The, 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 the atonement of sacrifice for Israel was for people who had not rejected the word of the Lord. It was not for those that sinned presumptuously and did reject the word of the Lord. Those people they perished.
Now that is fascinating. Now we have this inter interesting account also of a man who they discover was gathering sticks on the Sabbath day. Now <coughs> he's gathering sticks on the Sabbath day and they arrest him and they bring him and they say what we're going to do with him. And uh, they inquire of the Lord and the Lord says he shall be put to death and all the congregation. They stoned him with stones outside the camp and he died and the fear of the Lord came upon the whole congregation. And we have this last thing, the last passage, the Lord spake unto Moses saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, bid them that they make fringes on the border of their garment throughout their generations and that they put on the fringe of the borders of their garment a ribbon of blue. So there is a blue border. And whenever they looked upon the border of blue, what? They will remember all the commandments of the Lord to do them. And they shall seek not after their own heart with their own eyes, after which you use, that you used to go a whoring, that you may remember to do all my commandments and to be holy unto your God. I am the Lord which brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord your God. Now then, there are Christians who would say the children of Israel never kept any of the commandments of the Lord. Well, obviously they did. And they must have done because they would have ceased to exist as a nation if they'd have completely willfully sinned. So the border of blue that was there was the hem, as we would call it, the border of blue on their garments was a constant reminder that they were bound to keep all of the commandments and they were to be holy unto the Lord their God. Well, there we are. How interesting. We'll look forward to speaking to you again tomorrow. And uh, God bless you all. Have a great day. Bye for now.